We're here to talk about Sniper Goose Warrior 2, and you're watching Connected Digital World. Status. Scanning. You got mortar fire about three clicks north of your position. What goes through my head before I pull the trigger? One shot, one kill. We recently got to sit down with one of the producers from Sniper Ghost Warrior 2 from City Interactive. We talked to him about the game, multiplayer, maps, and various other things. Enjoy the interview. Excellent. So do you want to introduce yourself? My name is Michael Strotrinsky. I'm one of the producers of Sniper Ghost Warrior 2. So tell us a little bit about uh, Ghost Warrior 2. Sniper Ghost Warrior 2 is the sequel to Sniper Ghost Warrior. It's um, a modern sniper um, game um, based on CryEngine 3. It's a first-person shooter, uh, but it has a slightly different approach to, um, to the shooter genre um, compared to the uh, run-and-gun titles out there. And Sniper Ghost Warrior 2, it's all about um, keeping it stealthy, um, using distance to your advantage, and observing the, um, let's say, the environment, the, the enemies, before engaging. So it has a, a bit more of a tactical feel to it. So what are the challenges that you've uh, had to overcome for this particular title? Well, the, the first thing was uh, we were working on a third-party uh, technology, uh, which is not as um, um, comfortable as working on your own engine, where you know you were way around perfectly. Uh, but um, the guys from Crytek uh, came with great support um, on that. So we had um, um, sessions where when they came over to Warsaw, where, where, where the studio, City Interactive Studio, is is uh, placed, they helped um, solve the problems. We had guys uh, going out to Frankfurt to their studio um, to to learn more about the possibilities of the CryEngine three, and all, all, also been in in, in touch um, throughout the process. Um, one of the design, um, let's say, um, um, well things we had to deal with um, was um, actually creating a game where the distance plays such a big role. Uh, if you're creating a run and, un run and gun game, it's pretty much straightforward. You, you just place the enemies and on short distances and that's it. Uh, when, you, uh, when we were designing the long distance shots and long distance uh, situations, uh, we really had to um, figure out the behavior of the AI, um, um, of the enemies, uh, before they get um, into battle. Because you always, most of the time you come across enemies that are unaware of your presence, so they have to act naturally, and, um, and then once, once alarmed, they also have to um, use tactics uh, that fit fighting a sniper, just instead of just uh, shooting from the hip from, from half a kilometer away. So this time around, um, we redesigned the AI um, compared to the first Sniper Boost Warrior. Uh, we added new uh, behaviors um, that make the AI um, act way more natural in a, in, a, in a given situation. So for instance, they will use cover um, and try to shorten the distance uh, using cover to approach the player. So the player isn't um, accurate enough of his shots and allows enemies to, to come too close, he might get in deep trouble, as you've seen um, at the demo. Um, so, <laughs> as you say, obviously the, the demo you gave this morning, there was uh, two distinct different levels. One was very much stealth, uh, and obviously in the, in the demo you were, you were seen. But unlike other games, it wasn't, you've just been seen, game over, start a game. You have the opportunity to try and, and fight for your life, as it were. Exactly. Um, that's different to a lot of games, so why did you do that? Well, we, um, we w really wanted to um, make the game as authentic as, as, as possible. So that was one of the choices. Um, of course, we have moments in the game where if you alarm the enemies, it's, it's mission over. It, it depends um, if story-wise it makes sense. So let's say if we were after a, let's say a higher ra ranking officer of the enemy, uh, a key target, if we alarm his uh, bodyguards along the uh, along the way before we actually have uh, um, a chance to take the shot, he'll be long gone before we get there. So that's when we end end the mission. But if if we are on the mission that um, the objective is let's say quite far away and um, setting an alarm at a um, um, let's say a smaller base of the enemies doesn't. Um, 
interfere with the main objective, we let the, we let the uh, player go on. And if he's good enough, he might survive. But uh, yeah, it gets tough at some points. Obviously, this morning you deliberately let yourself be killed so you could show us uh, that element of the game. Exactly. That was my purpose. And you did it well. Um, there seems to be quite a lot of humour in the game between your character, the sniper, obviously, and your, and your spotter, um, but not over-the-top humour. So uh, wh why did you include that? Well, um, the story in Sniper Goose Warrior 2 um, is um, all about the character rather than the, um, let's say, um, chasing terrorist mission. So um, it was very important for us to, to build the characters. Um, they have, their, they have um, certain relations um, to one another. It's not always the same spotter throughout the game. Um, um, there's, uh, well, I don't want to go into too much details, but there's betrayal, um, to, yeah, <laughs> turn, um, you know, cliffhanger moments in the story. So that's why we really need to, needed to build the characters um, um, as natural as, as possible and their uh, relations as natural as possible. Cause probably if any one of us would be stuck in a jungle for um, a year with one guy, we be cracking jokes as well and be harsh on one another. Excellent. So the game's set um, in different parts of the globe. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the locations? Sure. Um, the game starts um, in, in the Philippines um, where uh, we join our spotter on a mission to um, take out um, our organization who is about to deal a biochemical weapon. Um, from there, we have a, f a flashback mission in, in Sarajevo in 1993, which is our urban environment. Um, don't want to go into much detail with the story, um, but if, um, after Sarajevo, we take the player again um, to, to modern times, into Tibet, which is a mountain uh, area. What, it, what is cool about um, um, including three different types of environments is, in the game is that um, each environment um, requires a, a slightly different tactics from the sniper. So in the Philippines, it'll always be smart to keep to the foliage, um, stay in these bushes, um, try to be undetected. While in the urban environment, for instance, it's always nice to fi find a uh, high sniping spot on a rooftop or, or, or a, a top level, one of the top level windows and take your shots from there. Um, and personally, my favorite is the t Tibet environment in terms of tactics. Um, I like to think about it as a fusion of, of both because it has um, man-made structures um, of the t uh, Tibetan temples but also has all the foliage so you can mix the tactics you learned in the previous two acts. And what sort of research did you guys do for the locations? Well, um, unfortunately we didn't get to travel to, to all these beautiful places um, but um, they're based on, uh, on um, actual footage from these places uh, from the from times like in, in um, in the case of, of Sarajevo '93, um, so we mo um, they're they're not um, let's say uh, one to one, but they're very highly inspired. And, you, and if if you know your um, geography well, uh, you might be able to recognize certain um, spots or buildings and um, um, monuments or, or or so on. Obviously, as a sniper, the key part of the sniper is. is sniper rifle. How accurate is the representation of the, the weapons in this game? Well, it's um, it's authentic. I wouldn't say it's realistic, uh, authentic. Um, when we were doing the research uh, for um, for the sniper's work, we uh, I got to know um, there's so much more than um, the bullet drop, the wind strength and direction, and, uh, and the bullet uh, time, meaning the time the bullet needs to get to the target. These are the ballistic factors we take in consideration in our game. But in, in, in real life, snipers um, have to calculate the curve of, of the globe, the, um, there's a word for that, but the, but the moisture of the air. Humid Humidity. Exactly, that's the one. So uh, we didn't want it to, to do it oh, way over the top. We didn't want to end up with a game um, where the player set, sits two days in a bush to take one shot because this is how um, realistically um, snipers work. So it's a, it's a, in my opinion, it's a good balance between uh, realism and fun, and we come up with alphantism. Excellent. Let's talk a bit about bullet cams. 
Um, we've seen in the demo this morning that when you take certain shots, you get a, a bullet cam. So do you want to tell us why you get those and what they mean for the player? Um, the uh, the moments where when uh, the camera follows the bullet um, all the way to the target are the uh, are rewards for uh, well placed shots. Um, there are a couple of um, um, factors that might trigger a bullet cam. The first is uh, the distance. If you take a really long shot, you, you might be sure to, to get a uh, get a bullet cam um, if, if you get a target, of course. Uh, but also if you uh, so some more tricky shots. Um, like um, get a moving target, which is um, not always that easy, um, depending on what uh, difficulty level you're, you're playing on. Uh, I'll get back to that <laughs> in a bit. Um, double kills, um, shooting enemies through fin cover, that all triggers bullet counts. Basically, it's a reward for, uh, for a well-placed sniper shot. Cool. So, yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about... Uh, difficulty the levels. difficulty levels. There. Yeah, th these, these are quite important in our game. Um, we wanted the game to be uh, approachable uh, for more casual players, but also um, be fun and um, rewarding for more hardcore players. So depending on difficulty levels, you get um, different types of simplifiers um, that allow you to um, calculate the shots or, or simply just go for the game, not worrying about the, the ballistic factors. So on easy mode, uh, you'll get, you, the player gets uh, a red dot uh, that shows that where the bullet is going to hit. And um, yeah, that makes, him, makes the player more um, concentrate on the, on, the, on the mission itself rather than um, each, each and single shot. If you play on hard, you have to uh, figure out and calculate the bullet drop, the wind strength and direction, and the time the bullet needs to get to the target. It gets much more trickier. Um, also, um, the easy mode um, um, gives the player um, indicators that show which targets uh, to take out um, at what point. Um, so if you want to take out, uh, let's say, um, arena of enemies, stealthy, you have to you have to figure out the um, um, the pattern uh, which enemy to, to take out when um, and on easy mode we indicate the enemy to take out a, at the given point to, to not alarm the rest um, on hard on hard mode it's up to the player to listen to the, to the spotter but also observe the surroundings and well um, get more into the tactical side of, the, of Sniper Ghost Warrior 2. Okay. The first game obviously didn't get a very Good score, shall we say, from yeah. reviewers. However, um, game buyers really liked it, and it's it's a very popular game. So, what have you learned and done differently for the second game? Well, there was uh, well a part of the formula of uh, of, uh, of a sniper game, which, um, like you said, was um, pretty successful, and people really um, seemed like li uh, waited for this sort of game. Uh, we wanted to address as as, uh, as much um, issues that were uh, present in the first one, and and fix them for the second one. So so like I said during the, the demo, uh, we actually made a list of stuff um, people liked and didn't like in the first one. Um, first of all, we took out the um, the run gun sections from the game. That wasn't very popular in the first. Um, the reason to uh, to put that in the first place was that we thought uh, we didn't want to. Um, um, keep the pace all stealthy throughout the game, but um, um, at the end of the day, the player said, "Hey, it's a sniper game. I want to be a sniper, so take away these assault rifles." So this is what we've done in the in the second game. Um, also, the cry engine um, allowed us to um, improve certain aspects and mechanics of the game. So, like uh, the AI behavior, the, the um, all, all the stuff I mentioned in the beginning of, of, of the first question, and that's that's the stuff we addressed. Um, we wanted to introduce new environments. That that was something f um, based on feedback from the community as well. So the first game was placed um, only in the jungles, and like I said before, it's um, jungles and um, urban environments and mountain environments this time around. Um, cooperation with, with the spotter, that was... Um, um, not as strong in the, in the first game. In, in the Sniper Ghost Warrior 2, um, you have to work with your spar to, um, to, to be able to, to, to progress through the missions. So 
there is lots of double double kills and uh, you take this one, I take that one, I do stealth kill, you take him with a shot and so on and so on. So yeah, basically that. And on top of that, we, we added loads of new features that we thought would um, fit the, uh, the Sniper Ghost Warrior um, let's say world. And they um, implemented like stealth kills, um, allowing the player to take out um, enemies um, with his knife silently, if he's stealthy enough to approach them. Um, uh, we added binoculars that allow the player to tag the enemies and makes it easier to observe their patterns and the, the, word, the way they're moving to selfie take them out with, the, with a sniper rifle and so on. How big is the game going to be? Uh, well, um, that's a tricky one because it's um, for me, um, I can complete the game in around 8 to 10 hours. That's 10 missions. Um, um, as, you could, as you saw during the demo, they're quite um, slow paced and you have to watch your every step if you don't want to get in trouble fast. Uh, but I think for a fresh player we can go over 10, 10 hours. Um, on top of that we have a multiplayer. Um, and what's cool about that, it's like in the first one, it's um, um, sniper oriented. So all the, all the players um, are snipers and it's all about um, looking out for the enemy and trying to stay concealed um, from, from, from the um, sight of, of others. So uh, yeah, I, I guess that um, might take some time to, to have fun with as well. So tell us a little bit more about multiplayer. What does it entail? Well, like I said, um, the, the key feature of the multiplayer is everybody's a sniper. Um, the thing is um, that um, when playing multiplayer games, the snipers are always the campers who sit in one place and um, don't move around and, and um, yeah. So we, we wanted to prevent that and um, we have, uh, we, the system we came up with is a bit different than in the first Sniper Ghost Warrior. Uh, this time around, every time you take a shot or uh, make any sort of noise like sprint, jump and you know, to, to take the shot. Um, then you pop up on the minimap for all the other players to see just for a second. So you, you can um, you can camp in that one bush, wait for the perfect shot, take out the enemy. But the moment you do, you have to move on and find your next one. So this is this is how we keep the players moving. Um, there will be two um, game modes um, for Sniper Ghost Warrior Two. Deathmatch and team deathmatch. Um, the maps are specially designed for for sniper gameplay, so there's long distances, um, obviously, and they're all based um, on on the maps from the game. So you have you get a you get a map um, in the Sarajevo environment, in the in the jungle Philippine environment, and the Tibet environment as well. Excellent. And when will the game be out? The game is coming out on the fifteenth of January two thousand thirteen on all. Um, three major platforms, Xbox 360, the PS3, and the PC. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.